Okay, this video is going to be a bit different because there's something that we need to talk about. I started this channel because I wanted to show others how to build a smart home that could help automate the boring stuff. And I knew going in that I wasn't going to have all the answers. There were going to be things I didn't know and times that I was going to say the wrong thing. On top of that, I knew my vision of a smart home wasn't always going to align with everyone else's vision. But I told myself, as long as I told you the truth about what I was doing and what you could do, then I could feel good about the content. But the reality is, I haven't been completely honest with you, especially about one of my favorite and most popular projects, Jarvis. And it's time for me to come clean. Welcome back to Psycho Labs. My name is Jeff. Okay, that intro is a little clickbaity. And if you saw Brandon Sanderson's recent apology video, then you already know where this video is headed. In fact, if you are a Brandon Sanderson fan and you haven't watched that apology video, you should probably check it out because it's probably the most fun I've ever had watching an apology video. But I would wait until you watch this video before you go watch that video. Anyway, what follows probably doesn't rise to a confession level event, although there is some truth to the lack of honesty, albeit it wasn't intentional. See, my version of Jarvis was an attempt to give Home Assistant a Jarvis-like personality without requiring large amounts of computing power, artificial intelligence, or even major programming skills. I wanted a system that would be easy for me and for you to set up and customize for your own purpose. And for that, I relied heavily on Amazon Polly and Google Smart Speakers. But even then, it still meant that my version of Jarvis was out of reach for a lot of people. Because if you were going to use the Amazon Polly to set this up, it was going to limit you in three ways. First, it was going to require a monthly fee on top of the other fees and subscriptions you already have in your smart home. Second, if you were an Amazon Echo only house, you wouldn't be able to use the Amazon Polly integration with those media players. And lastly, no matter what speaker you were using, if you wanted to be able to change the voice on the fly, you weren't going to be able to do that with Amazon Polly. And that brings us to the subject of this video, because each one of those is 100% wrong. I mean, technically, if you're using the Amazon Media Player integration to do text-to-speech on your Amazon Echoes, you are using the Amazon Polly service. I just didn't think you had access to do SAML using that integration. That is another thing that I got wrong. And to make it up to you, I'm going to walk you through how you can set up Amazon Polly with SAML using the Amazon Media Player integration in Home Assistant. First off, I was made aware of this solution by Chris Heater. Chris, I apologize if I just butchered your last name. Chris sent me an email showing me how to use the Amazon Media Player integration to leverage Amazon Polly SAML and do things like change the voice on the fly. And then, of course, I spent the next 24 hours reevaluating all of my life choices up to that point. Oh, and of course, updating Jarvis. I've been working on adding the ability for Jarvis to prompt me for input instead of having to work off of a trigger. Boss, it appears you are working. Would you like me to turn on your desk lights? Yes, please. Okay. And since that ability only works on the Amazon Echo as of right now, as far as I know, I had to give up my normal Amazon Polly voice because I didn't think there was a way to get my normal Jarvis voice on the Amazon Media Player integration. The things we do for continuity. Anyway, I take no credit for figuring this out. Chris did all of the hard work. And with Chris's permission, I'm sharing that solution with you. If you have Amazon Echoes, then you're going to need the Amazon Media Player integration from Hacks to make all of this work. But I suspect a lot of you already have both of those. And this solution eliminates the monthly cost for Amazon Polly. And if you're already using my version of Jarvis, then you'll need to update your scripts just a bit. Like the other videos of late, there will be a GitHub repo that contains the code we're going to cover in this video. So let's jump in. I created a Jarvis.yaml file to put in my packages directory so that all the code needed for this would be contained in a single file. So we're going to go through this using that file. When we're done, I'll tell you how to grab all of this code and break it up for those of you not on the packages bandwagon. The first thing to find in this file is an input select. This helper is used so you can easily change between the Amazon Polly voices. You can define it like this, or you can use the helper panel in Home Assistant to create it using the UI. 
The options need to be actual Amazon Polly voices, so be sure you get those from the Amazon Polly documentation. The purpose of this is to give you the ability to easily change your system-wide Jarvis voice just by interacting with a drop-down in the Lovelace UI. So once added, no need to edit your YAML file if you decide you want a different voice. But this of course is completely optional. You could skip all of this and just supply the name of the voice you want to use at the time you call your notification service. We're going to cover that pattern as well for those of you that don't want or need the added flexibility. What follows in this file are some different examples of how to leverage this in your setup. All of them require the Amazon Media Player integration from Hacks, which of course makes this possible. I have a video walking you through how to set that up. There's a link to it in the description of this video. And since we're technically using Amazon Polly, you may want to spend some time with the Amazon Polly console to get a sense of what you can do and the different SAML tags required to make it happen. For example, you could use SAML tags to adjust the speed of that Amazon Polly voice, or even add in some breaths between your words to make your Jarvis sound closer to an actual person. But even if you're not ready to get deep into Amazon Polly, once you have that Amazon Media Player integration, you can start leveraging Chris's solution as is. To show you how you could do this, I have an automation here that kicks off a notification when lightning is detected. After the trigger in our automation, we call this notify service here. I'm not going to say her name because she's always listening, but this service should be added as part of that Amazon Media Player integration. Then in this data section, we have message. And here's where it gets fun. We can use that SAML to alter the voice. Like I said, you're not limited to the voice of your Amazon Echo. You can use any of the Amazon Poly voices. This SAML tag called voice name is how we change that name coming from the Echo. You could use the helper above like this, which simply uses the value of that dropdown helper to provide the name. Or you could just put the name in quotes like this. For me, Brian is the voice of Jarvis, but any of the Amazon Poly voices would work. The other SAML tags here are either from Chris or ones that I added. Chris found that the Brian voice actually sounded a lot better when sped up a bit, and I agree. I also like having those moments where Jarvis takes a breath, so I included the auto breaths tag. Again, you can find more about this on the Amazon Poly documentation, and I'll make sure there's a link to it in the description. I did include some of the common SAML tags I've used in the past at the top of this file for reference, because since we are using SAML here, we can use these tags throughout our message as needed. Just remember, for every tag, you need both an open tag and a closing tag. The target is the echo we want our notification to play on. Then add another data section with type as TTS. This method works if you want to build your notification into your automations. But frankly, I find having to add all of these lines every time I want a notification boring, so I use a script. Like this one under the script heading in this Jarvis file called Speech Engine Demo. These scripts can be named whatever makes sense to you. In scripts like this, I sometimes include conditions that allow me to put guardrails around when this script can actually run. This can be helpful to prevent it from doing things in the middle of the night or when you're not home. I've commented mine out here, but left them for reference. You can either add your own or modify these for your use case, or delete them altogether. Then the action looks the same as we saw before, except I use parameters to allow us to pass different data to this each time we call it. These parameters mean this script works more like a function and allow it to be modular and easier to adapt based on context in our smart home. First up, for voice, we just use the word voice as our variable or placeholder, and these curly braces tell Home Assistant to substitute the value we've stored in that variable in this place. This allows us to change the voice on the fly whenever we call this script, something that wasn't available to us if we were using the Amazon Poly integration in Home Assistant. Then we can do the same thing for message. And for target, I built a little decision tree of if else statements so I could pass a room name and have the script pick the right echo. 
All of this allows us to use the text-to-speech notifications with fewer lines. So my lighting automation could look like this. Trigger is the same, but for action, now I call my speech engine demo script and under data, provide those parameters. For message, I'm telling it to use this string here as the value of that message variable. And who, which is the name of a room. And voice, which will be the Amazon Poly voice we want to use. For this one, I'm using the current value of my voice helper we defined earlier but you could just as well supply the voice name, which could be helpful if you wanted this one notification to use a different voice than the rest of your general notifications. Anyway, the cool part of all of this is now we can use this notification service, pass it some data using our variables, and have our favorite Amazon Polly voice come out of our Amazon Echoes. All without having to sign up for Amazon Polly or change the default voice of our Amazon Echoes. And even better, we can change the voice of our notifications every time, giving us even more control than we had using that Amazon Polly integration. Now, like I said, Chris did all of the work. So I left links in the description of this video to his GitHub repo where you can see his configuration and get examples of how he's using this code in his setup. As far as my configuration goes, you can find all of this in the GitHub repo for this video in the jarvis.yaml file. If you're already using packages in your Home Assistant setup, you can just grab that jarvis.yaml file out of my packages directory and save it to your packages directory. If you're not using packages, you can just split up the jarvis.yaml file and put the different sections in its respective files. For example, just copy the input selects section out of the jarvis.yaml file and drop it into your configuration.yaml file if you don't already have an input selects section. Then copy the scripts out of the script section and put them in the scripts.yaml and any of these automations in the automations.yaml. Then either reload those domains using the YAML menu under developer tools or by restarting your Home Assistant instance. Anyway, I hope that makes up for the bad information that I've provided over the last few videos about Jarvis. And before you go, I wanna remind you one more time to go check out Chris's GitHub repo. There's a link to it in the description. Be sure you click that star and follow it. He has some really good stuff in there and some improvements over some of the things you'll find in my configuration. Like the cuckoo clock, which he's updated to use different chimes, and I'm totally going to steal, I mean borrow, and some ESP Home stuff for those of you looking for ESP Home inspiration. Anyway, it's one more resource for you to have while you're building your smart home. And that's it for this video. If you want to support Slacker Labs and the mission to help you automate the boring stuff, you can find links to the official Slacker Labs t-shirt store, as well as affiliate links and a link to buy me a coffee, if you so choose, in the description of this video. Or just let me know that you found value in this video by hitting that like button and consider subscribing to my channel, if you haven't already, for more smart home content like this. As always, thanks for taking time out of your home automation projects to watch mine. Until next time, go automate the boring stuff.